If something is chiral, that means it shows handedness. What I mean by handedness is that its mirror image, so here I've got a left-handed glove, and I'm going to take its mirror image, which would just be a right-handed glove. So its mirror image is not superimposable on itself. So there's no way that I can rotate this right-handed glove so that is identical to this left-handed glove. It's never going to happen. They are different. They are not superimposable on themselves. So a chiral compound is a compound in chemistry that has a mirror image that is not superimposable. So the mirror image is different. This means that that molecule will show handedness. What I mean by handedness is, okay, now let's imagine these gloves as an enzyme. Remember, enzymes catalyze chemical reactions in our body and they are necessary for all of those biochemical pathways and mechanisms and reactions that are going on in your body right now. So we can think of these gloves as this enzyme and then a hand as a molecule. The molecule must fit into the enzyme in order for that reaction to occur and my left hand fits perfectly into this enzyme like a glove <laughs> but it fits into the enzyme but my right hand so the mirror image of my left hand so if I took the mirror image of my left hand I've now got a right hand does not fit into this enzyme this hand has different properties than my left hand molecules show handedness so if a molecule has a mirror image that is not the same as itself, then we call it a chiral compound. A carbon atom with four groups attached to it will assume this tetrahedral geometry and the mirror image of this compound, so we'll take a mirror, make its mirror image This mirror image is not superimposable on itself. The greens match up and the whites match up, but the blue and the red do not match. If the red and the blue match, then now the green and the white do not match. That means this compound, we call it a chiral compound. It does not have an internal plane of symmetry, therefore the mirror image is not superimposable on itself. Here I have the chemical structure for S-naproxen. S-naproxen is the molecule that you will find in Aleve and other over-the-counter medicines. I've shown the molecule as it is in your stomach with this carboxylic acid group protonated a methyl group, CH3 group, and then this aromatic group all around this carbon in this, with a hydrogen in the back. So again, this fat wedge here tells me that this methyl group is coming towards me. This dotted wedge is going back away from me. This hydrogen is away. The methyl group is in the front. If you have this orientation of those four different groups, then you've got S-naproxen. If I were to switch two of those groups, any two of those, just pick two and switch them, now you've got R-naproxen. R-naproxen is a liver toxin, <laughs> and that's the mirror image of S-naproxen. So let me show this to you a little that are visual, so I'm going to take the mirror and make a mirror image of S-naproxen. So as you see, I've kept the methyl group towards me and then the hydrogen going back away from me in the board and I've switched the red and the blue. And redrew and we see this is the mirror image of S-naproxen. S-naproxen is a pain reliever. R-naproxen is reported as a liver toxin. They have the exact same molecular formula, the same bond-to-bond -bond connectivity. The difference is the arrangement of 
the atoms and the groups in space around that central carbon stereo center. We call it a stereo center because there's one, two, three, four different groups around that carbon. We call these two different molecules, the S naproxen and R naproxen, enantiomers. We call them enantiomers because they're stereoisomers, so that means they're isomers. Isomer just means that you have the same molecular formula but different, uh, con different structure. Well, they're stereoisomers, so we're even more specific that they are different compounds specifically because of the arrangement of the atoms in space. So they have the same bond-to-bond -bond connectivity, but the different arrangement in space makes it a stereoisomer. So the enantiomers are stereoisomers that are mirror images of one another, and they're not superimposable. If it is being left-handed, it fits into enzymes and receptors and all different biologically active compounds in one way, where this r naproxen is different. It's a different compound, and it actually has different physical properties that we can d look at in the lab. One of those that's a very quick method of determining which enantiomer we have is simply by putting it into a polarimeter. A polarimeter measures the direction that the compound rotates plane polarized light. So we can polarize light just like you put a light through a polarized sunglass filter and then this compound when dissolved in solution will actually rotate that polarization either to the left or to the right. And we could quickly measure and see, okay, well this one, naproxen, rotated it one direction, then the enantiomer, the mirror image, will rotate light in the opposite direction. You can't predict which direction it will rotate light based simply on the structure. Uh, it's kind of an interesting thing with this naproxen, whether or not it's got the sodium cation with the carboxylic acid anion, carboxylate anion, determines whether or not it will be left or to the right. So you can't tell just by looking at the structure, but you can tell if you had an equal mixture of both of these mirror images, it won't rotate plain polarized light. So you'd say, ooh, I've got an equal mixture of enantiomers. If I've got it rotating plain polarized light in one single direction, then you know you have either an enantiomerically pure sample or extra, an excess of this one enantiomer. So enantiomers are mirror images. Naproxen is sold as a single mirror image. It is not sold as a mixture with its R counterpart. In contrast, ibuprofen has a very similar chemical structure, but it's different, and slight changes in structure give different compounds, so it's a different compound, but it still has this carbon with one, two, three, four different groups, so it's got a stereo center, making this what we call a chiral compound. It can show handedness. And this ibuprofen we call the S ibuprofen, and its mirror image is the R ibuprofen. It's inactive. It is sold over the counter as a racemic mixture. So racemic mixture just means it's a mixture of both the left-handed and the right-handed version of those molecules.